Blessed be God, Father, Son, and Holy Spirit. And blessed be God's kingdom, now and forever. Amen. Almighty God, unto whom all hearts are open, all desires known, and from whom no secrets are hid, cleanse the thoughts of our hearts by the inspiration of thy Holy Spirit, that we may perfectly love thee and worthily magnify thy holy name through Christ our Lord. Amen. Hear what our Lord Jesus Christ saith: Thou shalt love the Lord thy God with all thy heart and with all thy soul and with all thy mind. This is the first and great commandment, and the second is like unto it. Thou shalt love thy neighbor as thyself. On these two commandments hang all the law and the prophets. Almighty and everlasting God, whose will it is to restore all things in thy well-beloved Son, the King of kings and Lord of lords, mercifully grant that the peoples of the earth, divided and enslaved by sin, may be brought freed and brought together under his most gracious rule, who liveth and reigneth with thee and the Holy Spirit, one God, now and forever. Amen. A reading from the book of the prophet Ezekiel. Thus says the Lord God, I myself will search for my sheep and will seek them out. As shepherds seek their flocks when they are among their scattered sheep, so I will seek out my sheep. I will rescue them from all the places to which they have been scattered on a day of clouds and thick darkness. I will bring them out from the peoples and gather them from the countries and will bring them into their land. And I will feed them on the mountains of Israel, by the watercourses and in all the inhabited parts of the land. I will feed them with good pasture, and the mountain heights of Israel shall be their pasture. There they shall lie down in good grazing land, and they shall feed on rich pasture on the mountains of Israel. I myself will be the shepherd of my sheep, and I will make them lie down, says the Lord God. I will seek the lost, and I will bring back the strayed, and I will bind up the injured, and I will strengthen the weak, but the fat and the strong I will destroy. I will feed them with justice. Therefore, says the Lord God to them, I myself will judge before the fat sheep and the lean sheep, because you pushed with flank and shoulder 
and butted at all the weak animals with your horns until you scattered them far and wide. I will save my flock, and they shall no longer be ravaged, and I will judge between sheep and sheep. I will set up over them one shepherd, my servant David, and he shall feed them. He shall feed them and be their shepherd, and I, the Lord, will be their God, and my servant David shall be prince among them. I, the Lord, have spoken." The word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. Please join me in praying Psalm 95, verses 1 through 7. Come, let us sing to the Lord. Let us shout for joy to the rock of our salvation. Let us come before his presence with thanksgiving and raise a loud shout to him with psalms. For the Lord is a great God, and a great King above all gods. In his hand are the caverns of the earth, and the heights of the hills are his also. The sea is his, for he made it, and his hands have molded the dry land. Come, let us bow down and bend the knee, and kneel before the Lord our Maker. For he is our God, and we are the people of his pasture and the sheep of his hand. Oh, that today you would hearken to his voice. A reading from the letter of Paul to the Ephesians. I have heard of your faith in the Lord Jesus and your love toward all the saints. And for this reason, I do not cease to give thanks for you as I remember you in my prayers. I pray that the God of our Lord Jesus Christ, the Father of glory, may give you a spirit of wisdom and revelation as you come to know him, so that, with the eyes of your heart enlightened, you may know what is the hope to which he has called you, what are the riches of his glorious inheritance among the saints, and what is the immeasurable greatness of his power for us who believe according to the working of his great power. God put this power to work in Christ when he raised him from the dead and seated him at his right hand in the heavenly places, far above all rule and authority and power and dominion, and above every name that is named, not only in this age, but also in the age to come. And he has put all things under his feet and has made him head over all the things of the church, which is his body, the fulfillness of him who fills all in all. The word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. Alleluia, alleluia, alleluia. Alleluia, Alleluia, Alleluia. Come, let us sing to the Lord. Let us shout for joy to the rock of our salvation. Alleluia. Alleluia, Alleluia. The Holy Gospel of our Lord Jesus Christ, according to Matthew. Glory be to thee, O Lord. Jesus said, When the Son of Man comes in his glory, and all the angels with him, then he will sit on the throne of his glory. All the nations will be gathered before him, and he will separate people one from another as a shepherd separates the sheep from the goats. And he will put the sheep at his right hand and the goats at the left. Then the king will say to those at his right hand, Come, you that are blessed by my father, 
Inherit the kingdom prepared for you from the foundation of the world. For I was hungry and you gave me food. I was thirsty and you gave me something to drink. I was a stranger and you welcomed me. I was naked and you gave me clothing. I was sick and you took care of me. I was in prison and you visited me. Then the righteous will answer him, Lord, when was it that we saw you hungry and gave you food, or thirsty and gave you something to drink? And when was it that we saw you a stranger and welcomed you, or naked and gave you clothing? And when was it that we saw you sick or in prison and visited you? And the king will answer them, Truly I tell you, just as you did it to one of the least of these who are members of my family, you did it to me. And he will say to those at his left hand, You that are accursed, depart from me into the eternal fire prepared for the devil and his angels. For I was hungry and you gave me no food. I was thirsty and you gave me nothing to drink. I was a stranger and you did not welcome me. Naked and you did not give me clothing sick and in prison, and you did not visit me. Then they also will answer, Lord, when was it that we saw you hungry or thirsty or a stranger or naked or sick or in prison and did not take care of you? Then he will answer them, Truly I tell you, just as you did not do it to one of the least of these, you did not do it to me. And these will go away into eternal punishment but the righteous into eternal life. The Gospel of the Lord. Praise be to thee, O Christ. In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. I hope it doesn't sound flippant to suggest that anyone can preach a sermon about today's gospel, the parable of the separation of the sheep from the goats. In most Bible studies, people would quickly agree that the theme is the call to believers to, quote, see Christ in everyone, faith serving as a kind of mystic X-ray, and then to serve him in the needy, a perfectly good theme. It's a bit harder to preach a sermon that focuses precisely on the telling details of Matthew's scenario of final judgment that reveal his intended theme, which is a bit different. First, those who have been called to account before the great king are all pagans. For Matthew, this is about judgment, awaiting those who have never heard of the gospel and who belong to the multiple religions and cults of the earth, all at that time forms of polytheism. This is the judgment of the ethnoi, that's the Greek term, and it's usually translated Gentiles in the New Testament. Secondly, the term one of the least of my brothers, or just one of the least, are terms that refer to members of the church, disciples of Christ. These are in-house code phrases that we know would have been used by Matthew's church members to refer to themselves. A kind of nickname, the littlest people. So actually, the scenario of judgment is about the very mixed reception that Christians were experiencing at the hand of pagan folk as believers began to gain tiny footholds in the wider society. Now, you remember that Matthew's Gospel ends with the magnificent scene of the risen Christ on the mountain in Galilee, sending the apostles out to make disciples of all the nations, it's a grand climax, but it doesn't at all justify the triumphalism of later phases of church missionary activity, the triumphalism we find so imperialistic, so jarring, 
whenever we sing 19th century mission hymns about converting the heathen. The Great Commission must be understood in the light of Jesus' solemn warning earlier in the 10th chapter of the Gospel. See, I'm sending you out as sheep in the midst of wolves. So-called missionaries were simply ordinary people who were brave enough to mingle with strangers and make themselves vulnerable to all sorts of abuse and risks, bearing a message which then, as now, goes completely against the grain of universal human religiosity. The message of the cross claims that God is present in vulnerability, not power. That God identifies with the powerless and voiceless and overlooked. That God suffers with, in and for the lowly. And that God disavows and judges the typical actions of the powerful and the rich. For Matthew, only the poor in spirit can be bearers of the gospel as the Sermon on the Mount made clear. Now, in his day, the bearers of the good news were liable to be thrown into prison as undesirables, liable to lose their livelihood, to run out of food of clothing for themselves and their families. But some pagan neighbors were tender and generous towards them, empathizing with them, supporting them even to the point of taking necessities to them in prison, when that kind of action could bring very unwelcome attention from the authorities. The parable of the sheep and the goats clearly affirms that those who act generously towards the marginalized, the forgotten, the neglected, have already taken the side of the one real and true, true God, even though they have not yet been converted, so-called. Their actions make clear that were they to have heard the explicit Christian message of the crucified Messiah, they would have understood the good news that God was on the side of the vulnerable. They had already gotten it with their actions showing that they believe that compassion rules. The gospel of a compassionate God who identifies with the poor and vulnerable would confirm and strengthen the validity of the instincts that they were already following. Conversely, the gospel of a vulnerable God present intimately in the lives of the forgotten, the neglected and the destitute could not make any sense at all to those who habitually overlooked them and saw no need to take any notice of their plight, let alone attend to their needs. Today's gospel makes the idea that all non-Christians are automatically destined for hell, a doctrine embraced by millions of fundamentalists who have hardened horrible Calvinist ideas about predestination, to be untenable and false. You that are blessed by my Father inherit the kingdom prepared for you from the foundation of the world, says the king in the story, to those who all their lives have been practitioners of pagan religions while acting with compassion. On the other hand, the scenario of judgment points to the outer darkness to which those who ignored and overlooked the needy were unwittingly heading. Perhaps the more courageous readers of Matthew's Gospel would have taken to heart a message that wasn't just about the fate of non-Christians. Those who were sorted out to the king's left hand are not condemned because they didn't see Christ in the destitute and vulnerable. They are condemned because they didn't see them in the first place. And this is just the point that pricks our own conscience, doesn't it? We don't consider ourselves cruel and contemptuous. We don't kick people aside in, with a sneer. 
Our real failing is that we tend not to see people in their need at all. All it takes is preoccupation with our own worries and needs to take over. And our brains simply filter the other stuff out. Soon we have really no idea that others in their human plight have become largely invisible to us. They've simply fallen off our radar, which has been calibrated to register only what concerns our own self-interest and those of our narrow circle. Those being put to the left in the story ask, when was it that we saw you hungry and thirsty, naked, sick and in prison? Their answer is not that they saw these people but failed to realize mystically that Christ was in them. They just didn't see them at all in the first place. They didn't see them in the only sense of the word see that matters to God. So our worship today and our meditations in the week ahead invite us to be honest about the way we habitually turn a blind eye. The gift of moral sight is one that we must ask for again and again and again. Our eye of compassion clouds over through the cataracts of anxiety and self-preoccupation. So Christ comes to us today, just as he did to blind Bartimaeus on the outskirts of Jericho, asking us, what do you want me to do for you? Will we have the courage to ask, as Bartimaeus did, my teacher, let me see again. Amen. Let us affirm the faith of the Church in the words of the Apostles' Creed. I believe in God, the Father Almighty, maker of heaven and earth, and in Jesus Christ, his only Son, our Lord, who was conceived by the Holy Ghost, born of the Virgin Mary, suffered under Pontius Pilate, was crucified, died, and buried. He descended into hell. The third day he rose again from the dead. He ascended into heaven and sitteth on the right hand of God the Father Almighty. From thence he shall come to judge the quick and the dead. I believe in the Holy Ghost, the Holy Catholic Church, the communion of saints, the forgiveness of sins, the resurrection of the body, and the life everlasting. Amen. Let us pray with all our hearts and all our minds to the Sovereign Creator in whom we live and move and have our being, saying, Lord, graciously hear us. That on this feast of Christ the King, we may conclude our year of worship sincerely grateful for all God's mercies and gifts, even during this time of loss and hardship. Lord, hear us. Lord, graciously hear us that the whole Church throughout the world may deepen its costly allegiance to Christ the crucified King, who revealed the power of God to be suffering love and boundless compassion, and that we may resist in his holy name the powers that inflict harm on our world through violence, division, exploitation of the poor, and indifference to the care of our planet. Lord, hear us. Lord, graciously hear us. For Marianne and Chilton, our bishops, for all the parishes and ministries in our diocese, for our own parish of all souls, that we may set out on the next stage of our life together with integrity, humility, and faithful hope, 
and faithfully support its ministries through our gifts of money and the sharing of its tasks. Lord, hear us. Lord, graciously hear us. For President-elect Joe Biden, Vice President-elect Kamala Harris, and the administration they are assembling, and for President Donald Trump in these final weeks of his term of office, for our courts and for the Congress, that those who seek to uphold and enforce the strictest codes of integrity and justice may prevail in their service of the people. Lord, hear us. Lord, graciously hear us. For nations and regions suffering from war and civil strife, especially in Ethiopia, Lebanon, Nagorno-Karabakh, that peacemakers may prevail with God's blessing. We pray for those peoples who la- whose lives are blighted by organized crime, drug cartels and corrupt officials, and for all those who are struggling to bring to justice those who wreak devastation on their societies in their lust for money and power. Lord, hear us. Lord, graciously hear us. For doctors, nurses, and all working in our medical systems, as they struggle to heal and protect those suffering in the COVID-19 pandemic, especially those who are bravely putting their own lives at risk. We pray especially for those working to prepare and distribute vaccines and control infection. And we commend to God's pity and protection, God's healing love, all those who are known to us who are sick, lonely, bereaved, unemployed, and whose very livelihoods are at risk. We remember in our hearts, especially those whose needs we know. Lord, hear us. Lord, graciously hear us. For the souls of those who have died especially those whose lives were cut short by the pandemic and those who died with none to pray for them. Lord, hear us. Lord, graciously hear us. Loving God, who has given unto thy Son, Jesus Christ, a kingdom which is not of this world, since he rules through power alone and empowers us, his disciples and envoys, to make peace and bring reconciliation in the world. Hear these our prayers which we offer now through him, who is not our king only, but our great high priest, for he liveth forever to make intercession for us at thy right hand. Amen. Let us confess our sins unto Almighty God. Most merciful God, we confess that we have sinned against thee in thought, word, and deed by what we have done and by what we have left undone. We have not loved thee with our whole heart. We have not loved our neighbors as ourselves. We are truly sorry and we humbly repent. For the sake of thy Son, Jesus Christ, have mercy on us and forgive us that we may delight in thy will and walk in thy ways to the glory of thy name. Amen. Almighty God, our Heavenly Father, who of his great mercy hath promised forgiveness of sins to all those who with hearty repentance and true faith turn unto him, have mercy upon you, pardon and deliver you from all your sins, confirm and strengthen you in all goodness, and bring you to everlasting life through Jesus Christ our Lord. Amen. Amen. Hear the word of God to all who truly turn to him. Come unto me, all ye that travail and are heavy laden, and I will refresh you. God so loved the world that he gave his only begotten Son to the end that all that believe in him should not perish, 
but have everlasting life. The peace of the Lord be always with you. And with thy spirit. What I love about All Souls, I would have to say first and foremost, is the people who are here. And that's always been the case. And of course, it's been a changing set of people over time. And so, you know, some of those people who were so very special to me in the early years when I was here are no longer with us. Some have moved to other parts of the country and some have passed on. Um, and what I find though is that there are always a new people coming to All Souls and they continue to make our place very rich and diverse and just a wonderful place to be. During the 23 or so years uh, that I have been attending All Souls, I have made many, many wonderful friends, and I really consider them to be a part of my family. Not only have we attended Sunday services together, but we have shared Thanksgiving dinners, Christmas celebrations. I cannot possibly count the number of birthday parties that I have attended over the years. What I am grateful for during this past year that has been a difficult year for us as we've not been able to gather in person due to the pandemic is that we've found other ways to remain in community with each other. So um, I think within a couple of weeks of us uh, not having services any longer, I started a um, substitute for the usual breakfast that we have after the early service. Uh, having a virtual breakfast over Zoom. And um, I found that to be, you know, an incredibly rewarding thing. And one of the aspects of it that was good um, is that people who no longer live uh, in the area have been able to join us again. When we are able to gather together in person again, I know it's going to be different. We're not going to be able to hug each other and be as close as we would like to be. And we're gonna be looking at each other through masks. But I think just that presence together, even with those limitations, is going to be wonderful. I pledge each year to All Souls in thanksgiving for the multitude of blessings in my life. I also give because I believe in the Episcopal Church itself. The church affirms the dignity and equality of all human beings and welcomes all groups without exception of race, ethnicity, gender, sexual preference, age, or any other reason, all are welcome. I strongly urge you to support all souls through your pledge. Be as generous as you can be. You are contributing to all souls and the Episcopal Church itself after you have thoughtfully and prayerfully decided on the amount you will pledge for 2021, I urge you to write the dollar amount on your pledge card and then add a zero. And if there's any uncertainty, the zero goes before the decimal point.
The Lord be with you. And with thy spirit. Lift up your hearts. We lift them up unto the Lord. Let us give thanks unto our Lord God. It is very meet, right, and our bounden duty that we should at all times and in all places give thanks unto Thee, O Lord, Holy Father, Almighty, Everlasting God, through Jesus Christ our Lord, who on the first day of the week overcame death and the grave, and by His glorious resurrection Open to us the way of everlasting life. Therefore, with angels and archangels, and with all the company of heaven, we laud and magnify thy glorious name, evermore praising thee and saying, to thee, O Lord our God, for that thou didst create heaven and earth, and didst make us in thine image, and of thy tender mercy didst give thine only Son, Jesus Christ, to take our nature upon him, and to suffer death upon the cross for our redemption. He made there a full and perfect sacrifice for the whole world, and did institute, and in his holy gospel command us to continue, a perpetual memory of that his precious death and sacrifice until his coming again. For in the night in which he was betrayed, he took bread. And when he had given thanks to thee, he broke it and gave it to his disciples, saying, Take, eat. This is my body, which is given for you. Do this for the remembrance of me. Likewise, after supper, he took the cup. And when he had given thanks, he gave it to them, saying, Drink this, all of you. For this is my blood of the new covenant, which is shed for you and for many for the remission of sins. Do this as oft as ye shall drink it in remembrance of me. Wherefore, O Lord and Heavenly Father, we thy people do celebrate and make with these thy holy gifts, which we now offer unto thee. The memorial thy Son hath commanded us to make having in remembrance his blessed passion and precious death, his mighty resurrection and glorious ascension, and looking for his coming again with power and great glory. And we most humbly beseech thee, O merciful Father, to hear us, and with thy word and Holy Spirit to bless and sanctify these gifts of bread and wine, that they may be unto us the body and blood of thy dearly beloved Son, Jesus Christ, and we earnestly desire thy fatherly goodness to accept this our sacrifice of praise and thanksgiving, whereby we offer and present unto thee, O Lord, ourselves, our souls and bodies. Grant, we beseech thee, that all who partake of this holy communion may worthily receive the most precious body and blood of thy Son, Jesus Christ, and be filled with thy grace and heavenly benediction, and also that we and all thy whole church may be made one body with him, that he may dwell in us and we in him through the same Jesus Christ our Lord. 
by whom and with whom and in whom, in the unity of the Holy Ghost, all honour and glory be unto thee, O Father Almighty, world without end. Amen. Amen. And now, as our Saviour Christ hath taught us, we are bold to pray. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, and the power, and the glory, for ever and ever. Amen. Alleluia. Christ our Passover is sacrificed for us. Therefore, let us keep the feast. Let us pray. Lord God, whose Son, our Saviour, Jesus Christ, triumphed over the powers of death and prepared for us a place in the new Jerusalem, grant that we who have this day given thanks for his resurrection may praise thee in that city of light of which he is the light and where he liveth and reigneth for ever and ever. Amen. May God keep you in all your days. May Christ shield you in all your ways. May the Spirit bring you healing and peace. May God, the Holy Trinity, drive all darkness from you and pour upon you blessing and light. Amen. Go in peace to love and serve the Lord.